Welcome to this week's episode of YouTube, where I was off for about uh, seven days uh, for a elbow surgery, and during that time, it seems like Axel got a little excited. Anytime there's change to a wolf pack, it can cause the wolves to kind of ramp up a little bit. You can see him panting quite a bit, uh, tail up in the air, a little bit of excitement, in contrast to Grayson, who was quite relaxed. And so... Grayson does have a little bit of an issue if he sees or hears <laughs> wild wolf activity outside of the enclosure. He may bark howl, but for the most part, he's pretty relaxed compared to Axel. Axel gets ramped up, gets excited very easily, does a lot of whining. Grayson, a little bit more even keel and calmer. And so that kind of change we're always aware of, and especially when it comes to Denali, our 11-year-old wolf in the exhibit, we don't want some kind of a little social stress to cause some redirection to him. And so we're always aware of that. But one thing Denali's got going for him is Denali is food possessive. From the time he was young, he was always able to take and guard and possess food from the rest of the pack. And that continues to be the way things operate today. You might see a lot of extra carcasses in the enclosure at this time. Winter is a much more dominant time of the year, and so we have a lot of scavengers here, a lot of ravens that are are taking food resources, so we're feeding extra meals, feeding on Tuesday some scraps, feeding beaver on Thursday, feeding a deer torso on Saturday night. And if Grayson doesn't get enough food, because Grayson is a little bit more timid, uh, we bring in extra chicken. You might see us lay some kibble around the enclosure. Anything to try to, again, just redirect some of the focus. And uh, we will see Axel um, having more food resources than Grayson because he is a little bit more kind of in everyone's way, a little bit more dominant, whereas Grayson being a little bit more timid. So this Axel excitement is something that, like I said, I want to watch um, Denali is often the focus of it. They get along very well, but uh, Denali's, a young, you know, he's not a, not a young boy. He really can't play the same way that Axel does. So we always provide cover hay, and you'll see a lot of that on the pump housing and in front of the exhibit. Um, as snow increases, we keep adding more hay and adding more hay until we have the springtime multiple layers coming out. Typically, Bolts and Denali are together, but uh, all four wolves have been up on the pump housing, so that's something that we make sure that there's several places in case the wolves want to have a little bit of space from each other that they can rest. And Bolts is a middle-ranking wolf who does probably try to control a little bit of some of the young exuberance around Denali, so that's a great uh, role that Bolts takes on. So typically we see the wolves excited during wolf care, which is between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning. And then again at later in the day, around that four or five o'clock time frame. So when wolf care interact, obviously the wolves want to have attention. So they tend to, you know, uh, posture for uh, interactions with the staff. But the staff is there to check them out physically. The reality is our, our philosophy is that the wolves are their own social companions. We don't want them to rely on the human component to be their social in interactions. We want them to be socially interacting with each other. So we want to look at tail wags. We want to look at, um, you know, parallel gates. We want to look at rubbing under chin, at, at, at sleeping together, at lying together. And there is Grayson doing a uh, more of a standing squat urination, whereas is Axel doing a raised leg urination there. Again, showing that little bit more timid response of Grayson. So every wolf has a personality, and that's one of the benefits of seeing them in a socialized exhibit, is you get to learn their personalities. And, and wolf care staff need to be able to understand each individual personality and what they need. And Grayson needs a lot of understanding, a lot of social uh, contact. Um, versus Grizzer here. Grizzer, our 15 and a half year old uh, wolf, who is alone in, in retirement right now. The social interactions with staff, he likes to have, but he's it's on his terms. And I think Grizzer's main thing that he likes to have is visibility. He wants to be able to see what's going on. So we have a lot of areas for Grizzer to come and go. We try to get him into the uh, front vestibule to feed so that he's comfortable coming in and out where the building um, access is. Uh, we uh, were nearly done with the roof line and the observation hut um, for around retirement, but we kind of ran into a lot of snow. But one of the biggest things we want to do for Grizzer as he ages here is make sure that we have 
a resource and a staff availability to be able to monitor him, to watch him, to see how he's progressing. And he does his fair amount of watching as well. He's watching the exhibit pack from the top of the back habitat den. He can see the pack. He can see them interact. And so as we said in the last YouTube, we're bringing the pack in um, to visit through the fence, but he gets the opportunity to watch them as well uh, uh, over the fence. So that's a real important thing. He's mentally very cognitively aware of his surroundings, even though his vision and his hearing um, are starting to decline. So if you'd like to learn more about our packs, please join our webinar subscription. Um, the offer is good until February 1st. You subscribe to all 14 webinars uh, and you get a reduced discount than the single view uh, payment. Um, so check out our website at wolf.org to learn more details and uh, to see these wolves on our monthly wolf care webinars. And we'll have six of them focused primarily on the pups in 2020. So thanks for watching. See you next week and have a great holiday season.